Well, over the last couple of months, Bill Shorten and I have been talking to the industry, to stakeholders and to people in the community about plans for renewable energy beyond 2020. Uh, in the last sitting of Parliament, we resolved a pretty ongoing controversy around plans for 2020, but people said to us right through that that they want to see ambition for the next decade. So we've been working pretty hard at trying to develop what is an ambitious but a realistic policy for 2030. Uh, households and businesses told us a couple of things. Firstly, they said they want Australia to be ambitious in this area. They understand that we have some of the best solar, wind, geothermal and wave resources on the face of the earth and we should use them. They also understand that we have some of the best scientists. The solar technology that is being rolled out around the world now, much of it was developed in Australian universities by Australian scientists and we should be benefiting from that revolution as well. I hear what you say but can the industry realistically achieve that target in such a relatively small amount of time? Well it is ambitious but we've been very careful to talk with industry, read the reports, take the advice on what is realistic and we're confident that 50% is an ambitious but a realistic goal. I think people understand out there in the community as much as in the industry itself that there is a revolution that's going on in the electricity sector, not just here in Australia but around the world and uh, things are changing very fast, not only in the way in which electricity is generated, often at a household level now, not just in big baseload power stations, but also we're on the cusp of a storage revolution, particularly with batteries, so that people will be able to have more control over how their energy is produced, what they pay for it and when they use it. That target on renewables also uh, would see an inverse drop in the number of coal production outlets and uh, the coal firing electricity. The current renewable energy target I think is settled at what, about 23% by 2020, therefore you're looking at a 27% drop in coal production in a decade, what impact will that have on the industry? Well, of course, that depends on what the demand is over the course of the 2020s. And there are different views about whether electricity demand will increase or whether it will stay pretty flat. Uh, so we need to be conscious of the fact that we don't quite know where total demand will be in 2030 and we need to keep talking to industry to make sure that our policy works for everyone. But we also need to recognise that completely separate, aside from the revolution that's happening in renewable energy, much of our existing thermal plant, so coal-fired and gas-fired plant, is getting pretty old and over the next 15 years in any event, Australia would have to be starting to talk about renewing our energy generation infrastructure. We've seen just here in my state of South Australia in the last few weeks some very old plants, one of which was built more than 50 years ago, uh, be uh, closed down or at least the announcement of an impending closure and uh, you know this is something, a conversation we'd be having to have anyway. What impact will a 50% renewable energy target have on power prices? Well, we've seen uh, over the last 12 or 18 months with this controversy after Tony Abbott's attack on the renewable energy target, a series of reports, including from the Prime Minister's own hand-picked panel headed by Dick Warburton, confirmed that putting extra renewable energy into the system actually depresses wholesale power prices, puts downward pressure on power prices for all households, whether or not they have solar panels on their roof and for all businesses. So we're very confident that we can do this in a way that continues to deliver benefits and dividends for households and consumers, not just in having more control over energy use and energy generation, but also cheaper, cleaner energy. This will obviously be a big focus of ours and we expect still that Tony Abbott will launch yet another fear campaign but his own report puts the light of that fear campaign. We know that we can do this in a way that works for everyone. So pushing this policy, you can promise voters cheaper power prices by 2030? Well, we know that, that wholesale power prices will be lower with extra renewable energy than they would be without it. This is going to be a benefit for households and consumers, not only in having more control and seeing a cleaner energy system for their country. We have one of the heaviest polluting energy systems in the world but importantly also having downward pressure on power prices which is so important for households but also for business.